Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys five wild, crazy story times that has happened to me over the years, maybe recently while being in Jamaica. And some of these story times are crazy. Some of them you have to like side eye everything that happened in the video and it's just insane. So I definitely want to share this with you guys. If you guys end up liking this video, I would want you guys to like comment down below or give this video a thumbs up if you would want to see one with me and my siblings because we all have story times that have happened like to all of us at the same time or like when we go out together or like just happen to them while they're in Jamaica something that they witness or experience and I also want you to share down below in the comment section your mini story times of like maybe weird things that happen crazy things insane things or just what you overall think about my story times because I would love to read all of them but anyways yeah so let's get into these story times okay so this one was like I don't even know how many years ago I was in high school and we, we came from a party in Mindeville so the party was like on Caledonia Road and I had my jeep this is when i was driving some old brick up suzuki jeep i had diarrhea too for some reason it was weird it was weird. party so it was me my sister my sister's friend and basically we all went and then we were leaving and we were like oh my god are there any 24 hour gas stations in Mandeville. I think we drove around there and it looked like it was locked. I think like back then we didn't know that if it's like a 24 hour gas station, you just go up to the window and then someone like opens a small little door, takes some money and does the thing for you. It's really sketchy and weird. Anyway, so we're like, you know what? Maybe we can reach back to Spallings from Mandeville on an empty gas tank. <laughs> so we were like, okay, let's just do it, right? I was like, whatever, what's the worst can happen? From Mandeville, Mandeville, from Mandeville all the way to Spallings, we knew basically all of the area. So we're like, and nothing's gonna happen in this country, right? It's not like Kingston City. Anyways, we're driving, we're driving, we're driving. We're like, we were like, we might make it okay, okay. So we were basically halfway to Smallings, right? Reach on Penn Hill, almost near like to the top of Penn Hill, and the car just stopped working. And it was like three o'clock in the morning, so we're like, OMG, what are we going to do? And we're stuck on Penn Hill, so we're like, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? My sister's like, okay, we're gonna have to call the police. <laughs> We're going to have to call the police to assist us. And then someone was like, police don't work at night in Jamaica, especially in the country. So they don't know which police we're calling. So anyways, we're calling 119. No, what? Not a single soul. Nobody responded. Nobody responded. And we were calling, calling, calling. We're like, what the hell? That's the police number. If you're not from Jamaica, that's the police number in Jamaica, 119. So we're there talking in the car. We're busting jokes for a lot of story time. So we're like, okay, maybe like one of those like CAA type of companies that when you break down, you just call them and they like tow you and stuff. So we're searching on Google and... Mindable and there's this company that came up so we're like, okay, great. Let's call them. We call them. No response. No response. No response. So we were stuck on the road for so long like we're like, holy shoot. What are we gonna do? We're gonna just have to wait here till morning time basically waited there until 5 in the morning But even before we waited till 5 in the morning We saw like some guy around like 4 o'clock walking down Penn Hill in the dark So we were like, oh, what the hell and he was walking with a machine too So we're like what so now I'm looking back at it He's probably going to his, like he probably was a farmer going to his like grung at like 4 in the morning because a lot of farmers wake up super early to do their farming before the Sun comes out and like kills you while wow, he was walking up and he was walking so fast with the machine we're like oh we're going to die. i always say five o'clock came and then both of my sisters came out in the car and started fanning on cars but no one was stopping like everyone kept just going by us and then the taxi stopped and pulled over and he was like you know i was going to not even stop near you guys because around these hours it was like still dark so maybe it was four actually he's like around these hours may not take not check from nobody he's like how like people will set you up in jamaica like they'll have people fanning down pretend something's wrong and then you'll pull over to help because you're just uh, good Samaritan and then when they pull you over things will happen. My, both my sisters hopped into his um, car and then he drove them to Spalling. They got gas and came back and then filled up my Jeep and then we went home. You guys comment down below let me know what you guys think about it. Is it true? In Jamaica, should you stop for people fanning you down? Is it true? Let me know. This is something that I hear all the time in Jamaica. So you're not supposed to take no check from nobody, especially at night, because even girls will set you up. Like sometimes guys will send up the girls them just to find you down. They'll find you down and you'll never be found again. Or they'll find you dead. Top of my hair looks so dry. I should have put oil in it. Listen, this one, this story time, I will not ever forget this ever, ever in my life. So this one I was in halfway tree. So I was in Kingston city I think i was going to sovereign so there was this one man every single time i went to the bus park every single time he would put me on a taxi put me on a taxi put me on a taxi so one morning i had my bag but i didn't close it right and i was in the bus park what what do they call it is it mandela bus park i can't remember what the correct bus park is but it's the bus parks you take if you're going up to like papine you tag. So I finished giving the taxi driver my money and give me a thousand. And you know how like everyone's rushing out the taxi so fast, like the world's ending whenever 
the taxi stops at a certain place so i'm just like oh my god give me back like a uh, change and all 100 dollars. so i just put it at the top of my bag and i was just like i'm hopping from one taxi to the other so i can just leave it like that curl mission i never do it so that same day i came out the taxi and he was there and then i was he was like oh where are you going and i was like sovereign and he was like all right i'm gonna put you on a taxi so i was like wait let me just buy something to eat first so i went and he followed me over to the fruits guy that was selling fruits there's a man he's still there he I th he's like a restaurant and he sells natural fruits i bought fruits from him but one tip guys do not buy do not buy any fruit that people sell in a clear plastic thing because they're rotten the cheapest one was the one in the container and that's why it was cheapest because it was rotten the man who put me on taxis was talking to me and he said something to me right and i was like no 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 i forget what it was and then as soon as i turned back to the fruits man to talk about fruits man all i seen was this man he reached into my bag put his hand in my bag and ripped his hand back out of my bag i turned so quick to him no i was like what the beep that's what i said so loud and then the man took off but he didn't take no money or nothing like he couldn't reach any money and try to take out like all the hundred dollar bills that were laid out all the top of my bag because my purse was way down at the bottom of my bag and i didn't have time to like grab my purse in front of everyone in the car weigh it down at the bottom of my bag put all the hundred dollars in it close it back up put it wait and i think i was wearing an outfit where there i was there's no pockets at all so i was like what what am i supposed to do anyway so after the man done reaching on my bag the man took off so quick and i turned back to the fruits man the fruits man was just like this staring at me and i was like what you're a waste man how are you just seeing someone trying to rob me and you're not doing anything and i know a few people like that like they'll see wrongs happening in society and they just I'm, i stay out of it because i don't want to be a part of it are you dumb like i don't care who you are what if i see someone doing wrongs i'm going to try and help the person that's like being victimized the best way that i can i actually even paid for nothing because he didn't even care to help me and it's so weird because the average Jamaican person they'll be like what? and start cussing and everything like that and try and assist me i always tell this story to people i was like thank god this man never never him never got any money from me out of my bag i still left god is good god was on my side oh my god this reminds this is actually a super super mini short story time this actually happened to me the other day I was in halfway tree, right? And I was looking for, it was around rush hour. I hate, I hate. That was the last time I said I'm ever taking taxi in Kingston ever again. It was so hard for me to get like one of the taxis that you call like on time, Apollo. So I was calling like 16 different numbers just to get a taxi to pick me up in halfway tree because the destination I was going to, I didn't exactly know how to get there on a regular, regular taxi. And um, I was on my phone. I didn't really want to have my phone out, but good thing there was police on the town. But Jamaican people don't care for police. They'll still beat you up in front of police and rob you. <laughs> when I call and call, I'm like, oh my god, why is no one answering and why am I not getting any taxis? Like, I don't want to have my phone out. I'll have my phone out. I have my phone. Then I noticed a guy just came up beside me and he was standing beside me. And I noticed because I don't like when people are standing beside me. I just don't like it. But I noticed as soon as I saw the guy stand beside me and I looked at him and I was like, what the be? And then I moved, right? Tell me how when I moved. Two twos later, I saw the man standing up right beside me again. And I was like, what the people? And he was doing it so smooth. Like, he was just acting like he was, like, you know, in the park, in the bus park. And it was the same exact bus park, too, that the guy who tried to, like, taping the $100 out of my bag. The man was acting like he was just casually, like, not doing anything. And as soon as I noticed that this guy was standing near me, probably to either rob my phone or something, I took off. I was like, I'm out of here. I'm gone. X, bye. And I took off so quick. And if you guys want to know more about story times that happen to me throughout the day, I usually put them in my vlog because I just talk about them quickly in my vlog. So you guys can definitely watch them in my vlog. So the moral of that story is just, like, I'm always aware of my surroundings. That's how I always catch all these people. But the only one I went a little, little bit shaky on was the whole bag thing. Because I literally, I kind of, I had a little bit of trust. Because he's been helping me for all these weeks. Why would I think this man would try and teeth from me? But it's always, it's always the people that know of you or know you are the ones teething from you. These were many years ago when I was in high school. In the summer, I decided I wanted to do an outreach program. So there was this outreach program um, in Kingston. And one summer, they did like a trench town initiative where... They were giving back like food, clothes, and whatever else. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to Trench Town. I've never been there before. Let me go and let me go take um, some pictures. So this is when I had a photography company and I was a photographer. So I was like, let me take some photos for this company. Maybe they might they like my photos and they may want to work with me in the future, which they did, right? So I went and we went to Trench Town. Love the place. People are so Trench Town is number one a humongous community. Just like how I think it's Tivoli that I that's big to me as well. There was this one part where I was thirsty. So me and a few of the volunteers we went to shop in the community. We bought bug juice because we we're like we're thirsty, so let's just buy some bug juice. And I was drinking it because I'm not gonna be dying of heat in this hot sun in Kingston. And if you guys are into Kingston and you live in Kingston, RP to your guys' soul because it's so 
hot and then one of these guys like i don't even know what to consider his race i don't know like he's racially ambiguous like he has so many races maybe he's just indian actually i don't know i knew he wasn't black but i don't know what race he was so i'm just gonna say he's racially ambiguous anyways he was carrying boxes and he would be considered as like uptown he would and he's so stupid like and he's just so stupid and annoying i have to say he's stupid because he actually is stupid and it's so rude as well he had like two big huge boxes in his hand and he was like i can't believe what you're doing right now and i was like i was like what what are you talking about and he was like why do you have a bug juice for and i was like what are you talking about what have you can't be drinking a bug juice in front of these people they're gonna want bug juice too and they don't have money and you're flashing these bug juices in their face i was like shut up i was like do you know how much bug juice is bug juice is i spent ten dollars on this bug juice these people in this community these people in trench town can afford bug juice what are you talking about they're they're not in absolute poverty poverty maybe they're low income some some of the people here but they're not in absolute obsolete i think it's absolute poverty absolute poverty and i started cussing him off because i'm like why are you saying such rude things you're so uneducated if you're giving back to people and you're volunteering at least be educated about the population and don't be disrespectful just because someone lives in a certain community and this is the moral of the story just because someone lives in a certain community don't look at them less than do not think everybody there is poor some people act, believe it or not some people actually like living in lower lower income communities because they just like the lifestyle the mentality in these communities i've known people like there's this girl i know in canada she comes from a nice family she has both parents in her life clean house decent parents and this girl just loves the i don't even want to say ghetto life but she, she just likes that type of like ghetto lifestyle and everything and you would think she comes from a ghetto family but when you go home and see what type like she's from a very middle class like nice family you'd be shocked um that was just so rude i'm like no like come on like these people are not going to fuss and fight over bug juice Jamaican people aren't frightened for things like that. And he's Jamaican too. We're born and raised in Jamaica. Gone to school in Jamaica and everything like that. And I cussed him off and I could care less. For some reason, he was the only person that cared about us buying bag juice. And he just wanted to say it to me out of everybody. He tried, he tried to cuss me. He literally tried to cuss me. Back because I'm like, don't be rude. Don't be uneducated. For someone who goes to the best schools in Jamaica, going off to university to a best university, you're very uneducated about social issues and about poverty, absolute poverty, being low income. What? I was talking to people with the bag juice in my hand and drinking the bag juice. And all they cared about a lot of the residents in trench town cared about just getting jobs like, half of these people that you guys consider uptown and stuff like have no damn sense because they stay in these small little these bubbles and circles and they hang out with people only in their their social class or in their friendship groups that they're just they lack they're, they live on a rock under a rock basically they're not aware of like things that are happening and i'm so glad that i hang out with people of all different social classes i think the lighting was getting a little bit dark because it's about to rain so I hopefully the lighting got better. And I'll never forget this story. So one day we were coming from Little Ochi and we were coming up Spur Tree Hill. And sometimes Spur Tree Hill has just so much traffic. So you have to just wait. You have to drive slow and take your time. So basically that's what everyone was doing and that's what I was doing. And this is why I don't support that spurt. I, I won't ever support them because of this incident. And it, ugh, it just bothers me because we could have died that night. So one lane would be like two lanes in the countryside in Jamaica. So basically why are you trying to overtake people that just does make any sense so picture the road like that and we're going up so cars are coming down so cars are coming down we're going up tell me i don't know we see a big dusty stinking nuts for a bus trying to overtake everyone so the, the bus is driving on the line trying to overtake us I saw the bus coming and i was like oh my god everyone in the car everyone in the jeep the grassy jeep these are this was years ago started screaming and i started screaming too so i had to like literally come off the road so i had to swing the car and i ended up all the way in the bush and the guy across, across the other road he had to go up in the bush too and he came out the car and he started preaching he was like thank you god and he's like no and that's not what wrong with him people and he's praying he's like oh my god i almost died we almost died we almost died that's how bad it is me just saying it doesn't sound so bad like but the whole situation was just insane i don't understand what this this bus driver was on so basically we held, we held up traffic for like two like a, i would say like a minute or two because we were like oh my god what just happened oh my god we almost died we almost just died we almost just died that's just not even the part of the story that aggravates my soul follow the bus straight to mandeville and this is when netsford was at the plaza right beside bottom koc one of my sisters hopped out the car so quick and went straight up into the bus like the, they were unloading people out of the bus ran up straight up to the bus to so the bus driver started cussing off why would you do that why would you do that you almost killed us you almost killed us started cussing him i was like i shouldn't pop this man's tire just now and i took out my ratchet right that was not his bus it's like netsford bus but i at this point i was so mad because we literally almost died the man said that how we were stopping in 
this. We were starting and stopping drive, driving in the road. See when traffic comes here, you drive up a little stop, drive up a little stop, drive up a little. Everyone on Spur Tree in their car was doing that because it was just so many cars and there was traffic. So he was saying, oh, that's the reason why I overtook everyone on the road. And my sister's like, what do you mean? You almost killed everyone. And I think he said, sorry, but sorry wouldn't have brought us back if we all died that day. Like, what? So one of my older sisters were like, oh, no, no, we're speaking to the manager. So we went in. Like, I know it was with all my sisters again. And I think my niece and my nephew. The manager came out and we told the manager. And this lady, this lady was like, okay, we'll, we'll talk to him. We were like, what do you mean you'll just talk to him? And what do you mean just okay? So we were upset because this lady didn't even want to hear her story. We were trying to tell her. And she's like, yeah, we'll just talk to him. And we're trying to explain, what do you mean? Like, why why don't you care? Why aren't you more em empathetic about the situation and what happened? So she didn't care and stuff like that, which is typical. Oh, so annoying. Like, she did not care at all. She did not care care at all my sister's like i'm calling head office i'm writing an email everything like that even though that stuff doesn't work in jamaica like, this is the moral of the story this first of all these people like drive for themselves in jamaica like they're selfish drivers they don't drive for other people on the road but the thing is customer service is horrendous it's horrendous what the bbc cut okay so that's it for today's video i hope you liked it make sure again to comment down below any mini story times that you have in the comment section give this video a thumbs up if you would want to see like a part two of this and i'll see you in my next video au revoir